suffering and repetition. Yeah. Is the only way you truly learn as a human being. Yeah. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Jason. Jason Smith, owner, operator, um, lead instructor for Hobo Ford Survival. I'm a you know, resident blacksmith with Hobo Ford Survival as well. 21 year uh, special operations veteran, 10 years teaching survival at Sears School. Something else we have in common besides our name, we were both on Alone the Beast. I was on a Canada episode, he was on a Louisiana episode. So we both. Uh, uh, you think you had it easier? You had it way harder. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. No doubt about it. <laughs> and, I'm not saying I'm better than you. And, I'm just saying. <laughs> nah, well, well, you you also had Rick to carry you. So, yeah, that's I right. Mean, that's, <laughs> that's right. So, your theme, the hobo for survival, that's mm -hmm. kind of the idea is that you don't need to spend a million dollars. That's right. You don't have to have a huge budget to right. enjoy the outdoors right. and not die. <laughs> Doing it on the cheap, yeah. you know, re, uh, reusing, reclaiming. Looking at uh, look at things for what they can be, not for what they are. Yeah. And 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 the forge is kind of a double meaning, man. Like you know, uh, the whole premise of my business is I'm forging humans. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I'm forging a better you because I'm forging a better me every day. Yeah. At least I'm trying. And the unfinished look of my products represents the unfinished life that each one of us lives, and are constantly striving to become one percent better daily, as our as we on that quest to, yeah. get, to get closer. Uh, closer to God, closer to a, a better version of yeah. ourselves. So there's a whole deeper meaning to yeah. my business. It's not just some dude in some crappy clothes using scrap steel to make stuff. Man, we have so much in common. That's, yeah. that, you, yeah. you're, you're speaking my language. <laughs> well, I, 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 I had a feeling like yeah. that, that we would hit it off because yeah. I, you know, because of those those things that I was picking up yeah. in, in your content. Yeah. And uh, but but that's that's a, I was forged my whole career. I was I was hammered. I was put in the fire. I was retooled uh, into something else. At, at times, I was at the tip of the spear. Other times, I was in support mm -hmm. of that mission. Uh, so, you know, I feel like as a human, we're constantly forging ourselves to be a better version of ourselves. We're constantly, you know, in the fire and out of the fire and hammered, uh, you know, in some way, shape, or form mm -hmm. by uh, by the by life. Yeah. And, and screwing up, making mistakes, yes, learning from those yes. mistakes and coming back stronger from That's it. Right. That's right. Yep. And, you know, and, and not being locked into one thing, you know, so and perfection is uh, is an unattainable, uh, unattainable thing. So you shouldn't strive for for so much perfection, but be even the perfect you. Yeah. You know, the best you that you uh, can the best be. you that you can I be. I say man. the same yeah. thing. That's so yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. So. That's that's Hobo Ford Survival. That's mm -hmm. where I'm at. That's that's the whole 20 year journey I've been on since. I fell in love with uh, the Afghan people in yeah. Afghanistan in 2004, and uh, yeah, and what what they what they do on an everyday basis that we would call survival uh -huh. is everyday living. You know, the common sense approach to how they get through their daily lives was intoxicating. To really, me. absolutely interesting. So I came home and I was on a quest for that level. So can you give me an example of that? 2004, they were still drinking out of animal skins. Wow. So that, that in and of that was itself, that says it all, canteen. Yeah, they were filling up water in animal skins, tied off. In 2004. In 2004. I'm talking mud huts, no electricity, drinking out of animal skins. Man. So in 2004. So when your internet goes down, we're okay. You know, when your lights <laughs> we're not going to die. When your lights go out for a little while, you're going to be okay. You can figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you, have, you have to... You have to create the mindset, right? The mm -hmm. mi it's mindset over skill set. And, uh, you know, cycle. Yeah, winners find a way. Like, yep. we're going to figure this thing out. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah, we might not be comfortable. We might not have all the things that we used to have. Yeah. We can't watch the Netflix. Sure. But but we're not going to die. We're going to figure right. this thing out. That's right. And that goes yeah. with your job. That goes with mm -hmm. a with a national uh, or natural disaster, with a, with a death in the family. It, it goes with all, with all of that. It, psychologically, if you're not there, it doesn't matter how many skills you have; you'll right. never come out the other end successful. Right, right, right. You think about the from a from you know just a real quick to to touch on like the survival and the evasion and the the seer aspect of my career. You think about the the gentlemen that have been even the the ladies that have been in captivity um, over the years. Um, by and large, there was a lack of survival skills. Right, it, it wasn't there. You right. think about five years to freedom. Nick Rowe, the creator of survival school, of SEER school. He OJT'd survival for five years. Figured it out. Yeah, he invented mm -hmm. that school in yeah. his head yeah. while in captivity uh, in Vietnam. Right. So he didn't. He went into it with grit, with a, a, a will to survive. Mm -hmm. He never forgot 
his family. He never lost a reason to live. Right. And and he figured it out. Mm-hmm. Right. So he he pioneered that skill set and that mindset. So you think about after him, the people that have made it through those events have done it not because of their amazing survival skill set, but because they had the will to live. Hundred percent. And they figured it yeah. out. Yeah. If I had to pick a partner yeah. in some mission, some challenge, whatever it is, I will take the positive can do guy over the expert ninja every time. Every time. Every single time because that's what matters. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I people have asked me over the years, man, hey, would 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 I, you know, especially after the show, would 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 I be somebody that you you'd be on the show with? And I'm like, no. And I said, honest, ab- you're ab- just honest to it. A- absolutely nope. not. And I'll tell you why because I don't I don't like hanging out with you. <laughs> <laughs> because there's a there's an element yeah, of yeah. that that goes into it. Sure, I mean it really does. You're gonna spend a lot of time with You're somebody. You're gonna spend a lot of time with somebody You're sitting around the fire. I, I hope you I hope you like them. Yeah, because that makes for a very uncomfortable survival sure. scenario, man. Sure does. You know, so I would take somebody I like with yeah. no skills, right? Over you can show them stuff. That well, yeah, of course. They'll we're, figure it we're, out. We're all always learning. Right. Nobody's an expert at this. Right. You know. Yeah. And I and I think that. Uh, the only way that you can truly be an expert at survival is by spending time in that manufactured hardship, like yeah. we talked about earlier. Artificial hardship. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So you have to find yourself in a situation where you're suffering to have a frame of reference to not go there again. Right. You know, to, to avoid it because you, you know it's down that path. Yeah. You know? So by doing that over and over and over again, you, know, you callous your psychology to the point where, you know, thing. You can you can attack a situation so much better, uh, and and you can you can solve problems so much faster because you know where that goes. Right. No, I'm not going there. I know where that goes. I've been yeah, there. Yeah. I've been yeah, there. Yeah. No, no, we don't want been to do there, that. Done that. Yeah, don't we do don't that. want to do that. We don't want to do that. <laughs> don't put your finger in there. Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't, don't. Yeah, don't put that poison ivy in your mouth. Yeah, you know. I've been there. Yeah, don't do, that. <laughs> don't do that. So my question to you is this: is is why? That's. I think that that's a big important question that we have to ask ourselves. And anything that we do, anything that we spend our time with is why are we doing it? So you teach survival. You make handcrafted, hand-forged tools, Mm -hmm. right? Why do you do what you do? Why do you think survival is so important? Why do you think having quality tools is important? Mm -hmm. Um, Why is it necessary for us to practice these, these skills when we could just when we have electricity and modern conveniences mm-hmm. and air conditioning, what do you think? What do you think about that? I think that uh, the only way to grow and the only way to become a better version of yourself is through uh, pain, pain and repetition. Mm-hmm. You know, pain and repetition creates discipline. Discipline creates a better version of you. And amenities that make our life easier do not create hardship. They do not create discipline. They create laziness. They cre- create complacency. Mm-hmm. They create a dumber version of yourself when you outsource the responsibility of something in your life to something else. You now become a weaker version of yourself because now you're not responsible for that thing. Now I'm not advocating uh, not uh, freeing up white space in your day through outsourcing aspects of your day to something else. My buddy, Chris Kibler, a mentor of mine calls it aggravation tax, right? So, hey, I'll buy this. Uh, yeah. I'll buy this to, to stave off Just the aggravation. To, and then, yeah. you know, uh, and, yeah. and that, so that, I can focus on something else. Certainly. Right. And, that, and that could be a tool. It sure. could be a book. That All could right. be a video. That could be a human being yeah. that, that assists you to free up that white space. Yeah. So I'm not advocating against that. What I'm saying is don't do that to the level where you become so comfortable that you become inept. Uh-huh. Right, and a you become useless man, or 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 <laughs> woman, or woman, or yeah. or child. Yeah, you know. So I think by coming into this environment and and challenging yourself against nature, who Mother Nature hates you with all her heart. Mm-hmm. She doesn't care if you're cold. She doesn't care if you're hot. She's absolutely indifferent. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, yeah. it, you know, and and I used to tell students all the time, you know, the fact that something grows there and you know what it is doesn't change the fact that it grows there. Right. The fact that you know what it is makes all the difference in the world. Nature's going to grow stuff, places, yeah. just that's because that's what she does. Right. The only thing that separates you from somebody else know, is knowing what that, that thing is. Is it mm-hmm. edible? Is it medicinal? Can you use it? Is it poisonous? You know, it's going to grow regardless. Right, right. So, so you can run by it, and you could go, oh, I... 
that's wild carrot. I can eat that. Yeah. Or you can run by it and say, look at that weed. Yeah. Think about before you really, you know, most people drive down I-95 and they see a wall of green. Yeah. Right? Or any road for that matter. Sure. They see a wall of green. As my journey in, in, in survival kind of started taking off and I started being able to identify things, even at 80 miles an hour, I can pick out greenbrier and, right, and, right, right. and wild carrot yeah. and all the oh, different various species a, yeah, of trees. I can see all the trees. Yeah. I can see them because it is, it is slowed down for me because I know what I'm looking for. Right. If you have no idea what you're looking for, kind of like when we were filming the shelter, mm-hmm. if I know what I'm looking for, then I'm, then I'm looking for it's straight lines. I'm looking for straight lines. I'm looking right. for, I'm looking for characteristics. Right. Where if you if if your characteristic uh, your characteristic depth is green, well yeah. that's all you'll see. Yeah, my depth is quite deeper. Right, like right, I'm right. In, I'm swimming in the deep end of understanding what I'm looking for, and you're in the baby pool with ar- with with floaties, <laughs> with floaties on your <laughs> arms, still just seeing a wall of green. Right. So, and and that's as simple as just spending time in your local park, mm-hmm. you know, walking around with a, with your phone, just being curious. yeah, being curious with a book or a, or a, or your phone, like I did looking at trees and looking at the characteristics right. that set them apart from each other. Right. Um, so it's education, mm-hmm. it's empowerment and, and which is why I'm so primitively oriented in, in my skill set. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm very primitively oriented. I make my own bows and arrows. I throw why, out loud. Why, why do you think that's so important? Getting in touch with the skill sets in a, in, the, in a primitive fashion empower you to be more capable with modern tools, in my opinion. Sure. Because you understand, uh, it's, it's almost funny because I tell people, uh, delayed gratification is gone in this country. You know, when I grew up, there was no internet. There was no phone, a phone to that level. There was no remote control for a TV. There was yeah. no DVD. There was none of that stuff, yeah. right? You had to wait for your buddy's dad to come home so he could ride his bike with you. So who knows when that was going to be, right? right? You know, you had to wait for somebody to call you back on the phone. Yeah. You didn't know what the instant right, answer right. was. Yeah. You know, I asked if him at you school. Needed, if you can, needed to know a thing, you had to look it up in the encyclopedia or ask somebody. That's that you exactly knew. right. <laughs> I, call, I say, hey, we're at school. And I say, hey, Jason, can I, can I spend the night this weekend? I'll ask my mom. Yeah. Well, I didn't know until I saw you again the next day. Right. If it was or, okay or not. Or, yeah, or you called me on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Or your mother yeah. freed up enough time to yeah. call my mother on the phone. So yeah. my point is, how long could that take? Yeah. Here's the thing. You didn't know. Yeah. What was the flash to bang time on that answer? So because I didn't know, I cared less about finding out the answer. I still anticipated the answer, but knowing full well it could take it to eternity... <laughs> I was less interested. I found other stuff you to do. You had other things to do. Yes, but now we will sit and stare at our phone yeah. and stare at it and stare at it and stare at it. Why is this person responding to my text? Wow, yeah. Like instantaneously. Yeah. Instant we don't, gratification. Yeah, it, it's, we, I am about delayed gratification yeah. on absolutely everything yeah. I try to do. And coming to the woods and using primitive skills to do because things. talk about delayed. That's oh what I mean. Oh my gosh, you, everything takes you, so long. You don't appreciate how long it takes to cut something, how long it takes. Start a fire to, from scratch. Yes. Man. Find the materials, make the materials to be able to start to make the fire. Yeah. You have to make everything yeah. to make the fire. Yeah. So yeah, t- cut, go cut down a tree that's about this big around without something like this. Yeah. How are you going to do that? All day. Figure that out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, 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 it, it's constant, uh, you know, with the, with a tomahawk or an ax or something, yeah. I just, I keep swinging. I swing harder. I yeah. change the angle. I do these things. The tree yeah. comes down. Yeah. Like when you did your video with the double ax and you were taking that tree down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's almost delayed gratification. Oh, yeah. You know, you chopped on that tree and yeah. chopped and chopped and chopped. That's a big workout. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Again, functional PT, which is kind right. of your, your, yeah. your, your deal is right. like build the PT into the tree needs to come life. down right. it's life mm-hmm. you know i so gotta work out tree needs to come down we pair them together Done. we bundle we gotta work out every <laughs> day yeah we bundle always bundle you can right? save yeah yeah, so, yeah so you can bundle man <laughs> you know <laughs> coming in nature and doing this yeah do, doing this in the woods and and spending time out here and and spending time from a primitive standpoint really builds your understanding of, of of what it takes to create something therefore you don't take things for granted yeah see I don't take the fact that I can call you on the phone, like I can call you and I can say, where are you? And you can look at your GPS and you can give me an updated timeline exactly where you are. You didn't have to pull over and pull out your Ram and Galley and then pull out a string and figure out like how I'm driving this fast. about 60 miles Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We got instant, I got instant feedback, which allowed me 
to know exactly when you were going to be here so then I could factor my day sure. and I, I knew what, what tasks I could accomplish based on that, that information. Well, that all that wasn't provided right. instantaneously. So you had to you had to like wonder yeah. and guess and, and or think. Or your whole day might have just been books what, sitting here waiting. Yeah, just sitting here waiting. He's going to show up today. Yeah, I just because, don't know when. Because <laughs> he hasn't passed the pay phone. No cell phone yet. Yeah, he hasn't That's passed right. the pay phone. You know, so, so, there's, yeah. there, so I, um, I think that because if, if you live in a world where all that is your norm mm-hmm. all the time and you never remove yourself from that, you will always take that for granted. It will never be fast enough. Right. It will never be available enough. You will never be satisfied ever. Mm-hmm. Ever. Yeah. Because when's the new thing coming out that's going to be faster, the quicker? The next faster thing. Yes. Like how much faster can it get? Yeah. I I'm... can get the answer to any question I have mm-hmm. immediately. Why are we still improving upon this? Why can't, how is it going to get faster? I don't know. Right. <laughs> no, I, you're, exactly, you're exactly right. Yeah, how are we going to get this any yeah. better? Nature, the wilderness, that doesn't even have to be the wilderness. Just right. be nature just in and of itself. Um, and exposing yourself to the elements. Just when it's raining, you're outside in the mm-hmm. elements. And uh, that's why I like riding motorcycles so much. That's kind of that's one of my things because you're exposed. You're out there. You're vulnerable. You're, you're in it. You're in mm-hmm. yeah. it. It's not, it's, it's not something that you're seeing from a distance from a pr- protected space. You are there experiencing it. If it's cold outside, you're cold. And, um, and nothing teaches you that discipline and, and respect and patience better than nature, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and like you said, the primitive skills. I think the primitive skills, while... No, I do not think that one day I'm going to be in a survival situation with nothing and I'm going to be rubbing sticks together. I don't think that's probably going to happen. I, I'm ready for it if it does. Unless you volunteer for it. Unless I voluntarily <laughs> right. go out there and do it, which right. definitely happens on occasion. Right. But but that aside, it's probably not going to happen. That's not the reason why we do it. The reason why we do it is because of what it teaches us mm-hmm. um, and the respect that we gain for our ancestors, perhaps, mm-hmm. the people that figured this stuff out. Can yeah. you imagine the brain power it took to figure these what we call sim- primitive skills out right. for the first time it's not right. primitive like that is those people that came before us were geniuses they were brilliant well and they were they understood the basic needs and weren't distracted by anything other That's than true. the basic needs yeah. there were no distractions yeah. and people say all the time well if i didn't have all these distractions today i'd be i'd be so much better those off are and it's like yeah they really are mm. you choose to be distracted because yeah. you feel as if you're supposed to be because yeah. the guy over there is distracted. So I'm supposed to be distracted yeah. as well. Right. That's the norm. Yeah. So it's like I said earlier, you know, how many people know how to start, how uh, go, go to their kitchen and cook a meal, but don't know how to start but a couldn't fire, start a fire, couldn't start a fire. If they, if I, if I brought them out here and I, and I dropped the same foods, yeah. the fa- same food stuffs, yeah. pots, pans, the whole thing, yeah. start a fire and cook this meal. Yeah. One of the most common things Google searched is how to start a fire in a fireplace. <laughs> That's incredible. Incredible right. to me. We take it for granted. I, okay. So, all right. So we take it for granted because we possess those skills and our dads probably taught us how to do that. Or we learned it from our grandparents. Mm-hmm. Someone showed us how to do those skills and we grew up camping and doing all the things. A lot of people, unfortunately, did not grow up in that, in that kind of environment where someone was showing them how to do stuff. Right. Um, and they lived in a city or something. They didn't have easy access and none of their friends were doing it. Right. And so now suddenly they're like, well, maybe I probably should learn how to do this stuff, but it's so overwhelming. Uh, And that's where I think people like you and I come into play is where we can make things that seem so far out there for people that aren't accustomed to it accessible, right? right? right. It doesn't cost a lot of money. You don't need anything. Like you can just come out here with what you got. When people come camping with me and go on my survival adventures and scenarios and stuff, they always are like, what should I bring? What? Just bring what you want. I don't care. Bring your gear and we'll figure it out. Yeah. Bring whatever you want to comfortably camp. Yeah. Whatever that means to you. And right. if you don't have it, I don't care. Right. Like, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Abs- absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And because I, I wasn't able to make it to your last event and I wanted to. And I remember when I texted you, I was like, hey, what should I bring? And you were like, bring whatever you want. Stuff. And I, and I love it. I love it because. <laughs> or it, nothing. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it leaves. It leaves. Yeah. It creates. And this is a big part of what I want to established within my school here is I want to tap into your imagination. Yeah. I don't want to tell you what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I don't, everybody needs like a checklist nowadays. Yeah. I remember t- uh, teaching students like, Hey, we're going to start a fire. And it seems like almost like it's a, a generational thing, like a, a newer generational thing that, uh, that I'm noticing is like, like leading off with why I'm potentially going to fail this before I even try. Mm. Hey, you know, in SF we say, uh, watch one, do one, teach one. Right. So here is like, 
you know, you watch me do it, and I watch you do it, then you teach me how to do it. Right. And that's how you really lock stuff yeah. in, right? Yeah, like, you, you get know. really good at a skill. You get a lot better at a skill when you start teaching other people how that's to do it. it. That's when you really yeah. know, that's when you know you've locked in the skill, right. is when you can teach that skill and somebody else can replicate it. So yeah. so that's a big part of my, my teaching, the way I teach. Uh, because I feel it's an effective way to communicate those skills, mm -hmm. and then then when some and then somebody is empowered by being able to communicate that skill to somebody else. Yeah. you know, I may even say, "Hey, teach that to that other student. Sure. Talk talk him through that. He's struggling. Talk him through yeah, that." Not, yeah, and yeah. it's not me outsourcing my responsibility as an instructor, it's, but it's me empowering yeah, you. Yeah, it, it will. It'll seem like that to some people. Like, why am I doing? I'm not the instructor, but by making someone teach it man you're really instilling that skill or yeah, whatever it is yeah. into them tying that knot whatever they take it a is. lot they take a lot of pride right in what they're saying most people are really accept uh, are receptive oh that. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah because now they feel almost like they've taken on the responsibility of ensuring right. that person's got that right so right. i don't do it you know there's a lot of psychology into what i do you know and and uh and how i do it you know, I, I certainly take full responsibility for everything I teach my students, but I also want to empower them to be able to communicate that skill because in my hopes, they're going home and they're saying, hey, to their husband, wife, significant other, son, daughter, whatever, right. and say, hey, check this out. Why, this is how you tie a sheet bend. Mm -hmm. Here, give me the corner of your sheet on your bed and, yeah. and showing them how to, to tie it up. I learned this today. Isn't this really cool? Yeah. And then they're probably going to be like, yeah, whatever. That's, uh, you know, who cares? You know, whatever. You're like, like, it's not really yeah, that cool. It's not really that it's cool. Like, that's what my kids say to me <laughs> every time. That's yeah, not really that cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, as, as long as I think it's cool, you know, you know that's, that's, that's what that's, matters. Yeah, that's what matters. So. I get excited about that, things really absolutely. easily. That's right. Well, I think it's important important to uh communicate that passion mm -hmm. you know you have to be excited about what you're treat what you're teaching and get them excited about yeah. that skill as well because this is something to be excited about sure you know being out here in this fresh air you know you know connecting with this environment where i think i think we've distanced ourselves so far from this environment that we almost don't know how to connect to it anymore mm -hmm. and that's another aspect you know here here at the school like I'm building an environment where you can, I call it uh, tiers of suffering. Yeah, I, like, I, like I have these, I have tiers. I like where we're going here. I have, tier, <laughs> I have tiers of suffering. Like you can have entry level tier of oh, suffering where yeah, you can yeah. kind of dip your yeah. dip your toe in Try it, it out. have a shower at night, yeah. stay in a nice warm uh, little hut, you know, <laughs> or you could go top tier of suffering right. and, we, and we can take it to the max, you know, <laughs> and you can get exactly what you're looking for. So I'm, I'm trying to, to, to cater to all demographics and, and ensure that everybody has, um, uh, has an ability to connect in the way they feel yeah. comfortable. Suffering is important for a couple of reasons. Um, one, it builds strong bonds amongst friends and your peers mm -hmm. and stuff like that that you can't get in any other way. No. You can't get um, the strong bond that you'd create, you know, sucking it out here, just like getting rained on, yeah. and, you know, freezing all night long and having a, just sitting by a tiny little fire trying to keep it alive. Now that is, uh, that you can form a friendship doing like that, oh, doing yeah. that. You can't do that watching a football game. Yeah. And it just, yeah, I mean, you can have acquaintances and you can make friends, but real. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, no, you're, you're right. That yeah. suffering is primal. Yeah. I mean, it, it's down inside of you. Yes. Like that guy will lay in bed at night and think, man, I'm glad I got these, yeah. I got these covers. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, next time he sees you, he'll be like, man, yeah. I thought my house was cold, but boy, I remember that night when <laughs> yeah. we were in the woods and it yeah. was like freezing. It's type know? two fun is what I call it. You know, yeah. type one fun is fun all the time before, during, and after. Type two fun is only fun after. Yes. Right? And that's yes. the stuff you remember though. Yes. You yes. don't always remember the type one fun. You no. Know? always remember type two well not only the event but the people that suffered absolutely with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely it's super super yeah and, and then the other thing about that a suffering that i think is important and why i think it's important for us to do it is uh what we i call artificial suffering and you call it what is it was it the word uh, manufactured 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 suffering. hardship yeah. manufactured hardship yeah. artificial hardship yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, i call yeah, it yeah yeah, yeah. I think it's important for that is because our lives don't necessarily have that in it anymore. A right. lot of our lives don't. We've pushed it away. Right. Because it represents, uh, it represents, uh, you know, like bad. Yeah. Right. Like if, if you have to struggle, then yeah. you're not working hard enough. Right. You're if doing you, something wrong. Yeah. If you don't have this, then, yeah. then, then you're not a good worker or mm -hmm. you're not a good father or you're yeah. not a good mother or you're raising bad kids or, yeah. or whatever, whatever. And when you come out and you strip all those things away. Mm-hmm. All that judgment, yeah. all that inferiority 
complex type stuff. Sure. And you come out into an environment like this where everybody is on the same plan. Yeah. See, that's the thing nature does. It strips away. There's no. Doesn't matter how much money you make. There's no. <laughs> there's no politics. There's no race. Yeah. There's no money. No, it doesn't matter. You know, unless you're burning your dollars yeah. for, for for fire, <laughs> which you know, which you might could, be a thing. You know, yeah. uh, there, there, nature puts everybody on the same playing field, yeah. and. And you, you, know, you can only buy your way out of a situation in nature to a certain degree. You can the best gear on the planet can't can't overcome what the worst nature can throw at you. The only way you buy yourself out of a, a bad situation in nature is through psychology, mm -hmm. and that's through being out there repeatedly. The, uh -huh. the discipline that comes yeah. through repetition, as I said before, suffering and repetition yeah. is the only way you truly learn as a human being. Yeah. But we learned. To hate suffering, yeah, and so we we created stop gaps, yeah, to and, avoid it, to avoid at it at all costs, yeah, central heat. Well, oh, I'm a little bit, yeah, I'm a little bit chilly. Heat, <laughs> yes, heat, exactly. Like, oh, it's like one degree yeah, colder. Yes, like whatever. Yeah, yes, that's so it, stupid. That's exactly right, though. <laughs> but but we've put those things there, so now yeah. our uncomfortability is is almost not real. Yeah, right. Like that. Are you really uncomfortable? Yeah. Uh, here, here's my favorite. Uh, people will tell me all the time. I was like, "Have you ever eaten possum before?" Mm -hmm. And they're like, uh, "No." And I was like, "But I, but I could yeah. if I had to." Right. And I always say, "Well, you need a human being if you had to, because that's been proven. Like yeah. Alive is a real, you know, yeah. a Society of the Snow, the the new version of Alive has come out. That's a real movie. The Donner Party is a real thing. It you know what I mean? You know, obviously, this isn't an advocation for cannibalism. You know, what I'm trying to hammer home is the point that most people have never been truly hungry. Right. So when you say, I'm hungry mm -hmm. because it's 12 o'clock, yeah. are you hungry because it's 12 o'clock or are you hungry? You just got a little grumbly in your tummy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, or, 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 or are you looking at the clock and you yeah. just, are, you're like an animal that gets fed at a specific uh, time. Yeah. It's more so that, I Probably think. Probably so. Right? Then you may, or is your stomach now growling? Yeah. As a result of you looking at the clock. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. You don't know. Right. And you'll never know Until unless you you've ever it. been hungry. So, funny story. <laughs> my, my oldest daughter and my son went camping with me. And when we camp, we don't camp. We're, we're pretty rough. <laughs> so, yeah. so, anyway, they're sleeping under a poncho in the mud, you know. And uh, we went 24 hours with no food. Right. Right. And my daughter's like, eh, no big deal. Piece of cake. Like, she's fine. Doesn't complain at all. My son is this next day 24 hours later he's this pasty white like hollowed out soul yeah <laughs> like he is legitimately suffering he's not uh he's not faking it right he's not feeling sorry for himself well he's feeling sorry for himself but <laughs> but he's not faking it he is legitimately not doing well right 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 <laughs> because of the lack of calories in his body but what he learned hopefully from that is one, uh, an appreciation for food, mm -hmm. right? That's so easy for us right now. Yes. In current times. Um, and then two, how his body reacts to a lack of calories. Just, it's good knowledge to have. It like, is. How will you respond in this situation? You won't know until you're doing it. Well, for future events, because that's, that's definitely something that needs to be addressed routinely. Yeah. With, not just with your, your kids, but with yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not bad to go on an 18, 24 hour fast. No. It's not bad to do those it's things. It's not bad for you at all. It's not, it's very good for you. Yeah. <laughs> studies have shown it's great. Yes. It's actually great for you. Yes. Um, it, and, and it'll, it'll reset your body. It'll yeah. reset your mindset to like, what, what do I really need? It'll shrink your stomach. Right. to the point where you don't need as much when you yeah. eat and you'll start looking at food differently you'll think well maybe i don't need to have all that in my pantry or right. all this there or you know yeah. whatnot but getting back to your son it's like not only do you need as that as that you know maybe the first time it's just the food deprivation that that uh kind of leads off then the next time maybe it's food deprivation with uh maybe some sort of skill skill based evaluation sure on something very simple very rudimentary something that could easily be accomplished if you had a little bit of glucose All right you know and then maybe it's several things strung together that rely on the success of the one prior to right. it to make it to the end mm -hmm. and maybe at the end of that is is it is some type of food store uh, of you know food yeah you know so it's like the carrot on the stick yeah. kind of thing and it's like you only get it yeah if we're able to accomplish these things right so then you learn how to how to focus mm -hmm. at that detriment to be able like when i went to ranger school and you don't get to eat and right. you still have to do the mission yeah. and you still have to walk the tvd and you're freaking you know you know it's like uh you're broken in yeah man I, I graduated ranger school 30 year, or 31 years ago yeah. man and it's like it it was one of the hardest most significant events in my life I bet. you know and it, 
you know, so food deprivation has been introduced to me quite early in my life. And we were very poor when I was a kid anyway. We didn't have a lot of food. Um, so uh, I look at my son and I'm like, you're not hungry. Mm-hmm. I can show you it. You don't know what hungry is. I can show you hungry and not being hungry. I can show you that. Yeah. You know? I've been uh, hungry before. I, yeah. This ain't it. Yeah, you know, this ain't it. You know what I mean? I promise you this isn't it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, yeah. and, and, you know, it's the same old, you know, hey, there's people starving in the world. You know, you should appreciate that right. food there. That falls on deaf ears nowadays mm-hmm. because we're because I can change the channel when I see the starving people. Right. I don't have to appreciate that, right. which is sad. Mm-hmm. There's people that don't have clean drinking water in this yeah. world. There's people that still don't know what their next meal is going to come mm-hmm. from, you know. And uh, I think that we would all do better as a society to experience a little bit of that depri- deprivation in aspects of our life. You know, I, I tell you, like once a month, once every couple months, um, you know, at my house, I shut the power off. Yeah. I, and I, I shut the power off. You do this too? No, no, uh, yeah, we I, talked about this yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I shut yeah. the I shut the power off, and I think we talked about George yeah. Bushcraft actually. Yeah. You know, and I I put my and we we go through our uh, disaster preparedness right. type thing, right? We yeah. we power up the the essentials with the generator. We rotate gas that way. We rotate water that yeah. way. Uh, we boil water because okay, the you know if the power is off, maybe the machines at the at the water plant are bad. Sure. The water's not going to come out and tell you it's bad. Right. You're not going to know if the water's bad. Just you're go not going to know. If there, yeah. You're not going to know if there's feces in the water yeah. or something like that. So little things like that, without doing a 24 hour starvation event, mm-hmm. without putting a rucksack on and wandering into the woods, we we are at home right. in our home. No, no problems. Nobody's in danger, right. and we manufacture because you can turn the power on. Yeah, we can yeah. turn the power on if we get yeah. bored of it, yeah. you know, or whatever, right? <laughs> but, but yeah, this isn't so, fun anymore, Dad. Yeah, yeah. so, so th- I think those events, th- that that manufactured hardship, is definitely a way to create a sense of appreciation right. in your own home, which is the hardest place yeah. ever. The most comfortable place. Oh my gosh, right. man. What do you got? You got to turn your house upside down to make it uncomfortable yeah. nowadays, right? <laughs> that's right? I mean, and, and who's going to do that? Yeah. You know, who's going to do that? Right. So that's a way to do I it. I like that. You know, it's, it's definitely a, a, an idea that I came up with many, many years ago. And I did it in a way that was good to empower the family, to give people roles and responsibilities, to give people capabilities that they didn't, they didn't necessarily want or have. Yeah. It's like, no, your job is to do this. Yeah. Like your job is to rotate those cans. Your job is to, and then when the event happens, right. you know, we eat the stuff that needed to be rotated, That's right. you know, and, and it's a way to, to get rid of, you know, to and check for weaknesses. Yeah. And check, stuff yeah, like well, that. yeah. And yeah, then yeah. we, and then we sit in a yard as a family, we That's turn cool. the power back on. We, we sit down as a family. It's, yeah. it's, it's almost like playing a real world board game. Right. That's how I look at it. It's like yeah. a game. Yeah, yeah. But yet you're you're going through all your systems. Yeah. And you say, what were we lacking? What did we wish we had? And my son obviously he's always like, well, video games. Yeah. Well, those are so low on the priority list, <laughs> son. But I, yeah, not even close. <laughs> not even close. Yeah. But I got it. I knew what you were gonna say. Yeah. So you wait in. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I mean, were you lacking in your in your basics? Right. Did you have water, shelter, fire, food? Yeah. All right. Do we have signal in case we needed help? We sure. had somebody at the house that needed uh, assistance. Something new. Yeah. yeah. Did we have that figured out? First aid. Mm-hmm. Does everybody in the house know how to put a tourniquet on? Right. Like these are things that families can do without going to the woods. I agree. Yeah. You know. And yeah, that's good. I haven't mm-hmm. done that with my family. I, I've I've talked about it with them, but I haven't you know switched off the power and said mm-hmm. let's see what happens kind yeah. of thing. Um, always kind of prepping for that, but never really tested it uh, per se. So I need to do that. That'd be fun. And don't even let them know. No. Just, just turn it off. Yeah. And you, <laughs> when they start asking questions like. Hey, where's the where's our extra water? Yeah. Does hey does anybody know where the extension cord is for the generator? Yeah. yeah does yeah. anybody know how to start this generator? Yeah. Where's the gas for the generator? Right. Here, can we put this two cycle in there? Yeah. Because you send your son out to put gas in the generator, and what's he dump in there? Diesel. <laughs> Diesel or, in the or, gas or, or, yeah, or yeah, or, oh, or, no. uh, or two cycle. Right. right. So here's so these things are opportunities to see gaps mm-hmm. in people's understanding of 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 the pro- the play of the problem, yeah. and it also. And then you as a father, you sit back and just go like this. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do? Yeah. Problem solved. What are we I gonna, love it. What yeah. are we going to do? That's, that's right? Because Because what's going to happen is you're going to turn the power off and everybody's going to go like this. Uh-huh. What do you do? What do we do, Dad? <laughs> and, it's like, and then you sit back and you go, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What, what do, do we, do? we do? What do we need? Yeah. Let's talk about what do we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're going to say we need power. They're yeah. going to say that's going to be the number one thing they say. Nobody's going to think about clean drinking water. Right. Nobody's going to think about taking a hot shower. Yeah. They're going to say we need power. Right. Because power represents comfortable. Mm-hmm. 
That's it. And normal. And normal. Yeah, yeah. Right? Power is the hum, mm -hmm. the vibration of the electricity yeah. is, is wooing yeah. to you. Right? And as soon as it turns off, it's empty. Mm -hmm. You have this empty feeling. The right. house is quiet. There's yeah, no yeah, vibration. Yeah. <laughs> so you feel it's feels it's weird. It feels scary. Yeah. You feel like you're you're not even in your house anymore. That's right. You feel like you're in this abandoned mm. place that's <laughs> getting cold and like you're right, and you don't even feel like you can do anything. Why am I but, so cold? <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like uh, well, I, what? How are we supposed to make coffee? Yeah. Like, what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you want to see some you want to see some craziness. It's yeah. like shut the power off and then say, hey, let's have dinner. That's right. And they're like, well, well what are we gonna do? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. So it, it gives, I mean, really, that one scenario opens up so many different sub subsets sure. of that scenario yeah. to, like, dial in on for, for like, you know, you know, we were talking about earlier with the shelter and, like, the potential civil unrest or, you know, a scenario where you may have to hunker down in your house. Well, security becomes a, a major issue. Sure. So, like, you you then talk that piece. Right. Like, while everybody's running around taking care of these things, who's paying attention to the door? Right. Who's looking out the window? Who's looking out the, who's down looking the driveway? Out, yeah, who's looking out for our neighbor right. who we know is in a wheelchair? Mm -hmm. Or we know that they probably need help. Have we reached out to them? That's right. Have we, have we, have we, have we brought them into the fold to yeah, ensure good, that they're good? That's a good learning experience for sure. Good problem-solving opportunity. I like very, the problem-solving Yes, stuff. very much so. That's my favorite. And then you sit and you just hand out pieces of paper. When it's all over, you hand everybody a piece of paper and you say, what did we learn? What did we learn? Tell me what you learned personally yeah. from this experience. And you gather all that up and then you use that to drive training yeah. in preparation for the next one. Yeah. You know, it gives you, it gives you, uh, you think about like parents, like dad's like, well, I don't know what to do with my kid. All right. Well, turn the goddamn power off and see how much you don't know. And then, or how much you don't know. Right. And then guess what? You and your son get on YouTube and the power comes back on and learn something together. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Pro problem solved. That's awesome. I mean, little stuff like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Just yeah, opens itself up. We're doing that. Manufactured hardship, artificial hardship, yep. whatever you like to call it. Yep. I think is important. I think it is. Um, I think it's necessary for us to to do that on a regular basis, to stimulate our brains, the part of our brains that just doesn't get worked anymore. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, soft, jelly-like, yes, un unhardened, yeah, uncallous. Yeah, same same thing with exercise, working out and stuff. Uh, you gotta. I mean, you have to. If you if you don't, you're missing out on on a not just health benefits of it, but that 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 mental strength that comes along with doing something difficult and persevering sure. to to the end. Um, the confidence too. Yeah, the, that's the, true. The, the confidence in knowing that if I have to pick that up, I can. Yeah. If I have to run. Over there, I can. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't wonder whether or not you can. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, well, I assume I yeah, can. Do it. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. if it happened, yeah. I could do it. That's yeah. my favorite <laughs> answer for everything. Yeah. You know? Well, if you know, in the middle, in the moment, in the, I would. Yeah. I, I mean, know. and then you know, and I, when I, uh, you know, uh, start training jujitsu and everything, yeah. and you think, uh, well, you know, if. <laughs> You know, fight, man. I turn it on. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know, guess what? Could that, you? that guy's turning it on he too. He's turned it on. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he's turned it on. Yeah. So I and so I, when, when I used to teach students how to trap, you know, we do a primitive trapping, and yeah. not all primitive traps uh, kill the animal right away. Right. So you know, I tell them, it's like, let me tell you something, man. Like, you trap a raccoon, and he he's not dead. You gotta whack him. That well, no, that animal wants to live as oh, bad yeah, as you yeah, want to yeah, kill that's it. That's true. Yeah. A, a raccoon will read you your horse. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> you show up. That raccoon will tear your face off. Oh, yeah. He doesn't care. You know, what you think just because he's caught? He's caught? That's not how he thinks. You no. know what I mean? He's a predator. No, he wants to eat he, you. Yeah, he's a predator just like you. Yeah. So uh, that's the thing. That guy wants to win the fight as bad as you do. It isn't, a, it isn't about wanting to win. Right. Everybody wants to win. Yeah. Then why doesn't everybody win? Right. Because it doesn't matter what you want. <laughs> right? That's right. You know, it's just, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's the thing, man. Yeah. You know. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, we probably jabbered on enough for for one video. Um, appreciate you joining us. Uh, one more time, where can they find you? Uh, HoboFordSurvival dot com is the website. HoboFordSurvival Survival or HoboFords underscore Survival for IG and. Um, here in Cameron, North Carolina is my school, so you can always come out and spend some time come with me out here. Come spend time with you in person. Absolutely. Real life person. Real life. Yeah. Let's, let's hang out. Not just on a screen. No, let's let's do some training. 
All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Thumbs up, please. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and can't wait to see you on the next one.